Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Judy Hansen here with the Tropical Paradise Block of the Month. So exciting, we're, we're coming to an end. We've only got a few more blocks. So let's give it a big push. Everybody out there get caught up if you're not already. And today I'm doing part two of the, it's a sunshine month, right? And we just did the video on the prairie points and the sun. And now this is part two. This is our palm tree. What more, what is more tropical than a palm tree? And uh, so I'm also going to, in this video, continue on into part two of, uh, is going to be the conch shell and the small shell is all going to, and the reason I'm doing that is we've got some demarcation here in the type of a way we do a fusible project. So for these blocks, you're going to need your, your basic tools. You need a nice felt tip pen. I love my Karen K. Buckley scissors. They cut right to the end. We need our fusible web. How much do you all keep telling me you love the heat and bond light? And of course we need our patterns. So what we're going to do is start out by tracing our patterns. And when we put these on the blocks, it's important that you have drawn you know, some people draw their blocks. I've heard them telling me, for instance, this is finished block six and a half by 18 and a half. And that is what I would draw my space lines, but you could also draw it 18 by six, whichever, just stay consistent. So here, this one is actually drawn six and a half. So that means, why well, I like this one is because it's showing you now, the tip of this will be caught in the seam. That's fine. The tip of this will be caught in the seam. And of course, along the bottom, we want that caught in the seam allowance. I didn't have to put my pressing sheet on top of this. I pretty much eyeballed it by looking at the picture on the cover of the book. And uh, my seashell, the small one, everything fit together at just uh, exquisitely. You start out with the whole pink section. And so then you just put the other pieces, they'll fit right on it like a puzzle. So these we call, rather unceremoniously, we call it just the eyeball technique. It was the same thing you did with the fish, with the flowers, with the glasses. So very simple. So we're going to start today, I'm, it's the first time, and I'm going to be explaining to you an over-under technique, kind of the way shingles on a house are uh, put on. They overlap. And the reason I'm gonna clean up here and keep talking, the reason they overlap is to hide the edges because no matter how hard you try, you will not be able to match up those edges if you try and butt them. So this is the block we're going to do and explain. All right, so this one is our large conch shell. Isn't that pretty? So pleased with it. Love that exciting background. And so let's talk about these pieces. The first thing you wanna do, I should probably hold that up. You have all the fabrics in there to do your cutting, nice generous pieces. All right, so you do need a pressing sheet on this. And when you cut out your blocks, a couple of tips. One of my favorite ones is when you have like colors and patterns put on like colors, it's important to group those pieces. For one thing, it helps keep you organized. And for another thing, it saves on your fusible web, right? And so we're going to cut all of our gray pieces, all of our pink pieces, all of our white pieces. And I think a little part of our conch that's tan. So when we cut these out, we've grouped them. And that's why it's so important to label and number them. Okay, so. Now, how do we do this over, under, over, under with this kind of pattern? All right, let me pull out some things I've gotten ready. So it's a good idea this month to get your own copier and to make a photocopy of the pattern from the book. You can always tell if you've done it backwards or not by the number on there and by reading some of the words. And if you have an option on your printer that lets you flip it, that'll save you some time too. But if you don't have an option that lets you flip it, then just take and take this and trace it. 
So I took this, I laid it, remember if you lay it on a piece of white paper, you can see through very easily, and I flipped it. Now this will be, does that make sense? This will be how my finished layout will be. And you really, um, even very, I, I'm, I like to be sure I'm laying them the correct way. So no matter what level of quilter you are, I highly recommend that you create this. Okay, so we're going to start by taking our pattern here. Our, this is our reverse. Now, special way you're going to be cutting out these pieces. Let's talk about that. Wherever you see an arrow, your direction says position under, oh, I'm sorry, you're going to position that under application. It says to add a quarter inch to all undercuts. What does that mean? Especially, you know, I've got quite a few of you that are absolutely new to a lot of applique. You've been quilting a long time, or maybe you're a beginner. And I'm so impressed that you've stuck with it, and <laughs> it's it's been a lot of fun. I've I've uh, don't hesitate to call me if you have a particular question or whatever. Okay, moving on. So we took our piece. Let me go back to this one, and we cut it out. Now everywhere we cut it out. Do you see how I traced it? And I've added a quarter inch. Make sense? Now I didn't have to lay that, do that on the shell, the first shell, because that was the size it was. It wasn't going under anything. Does that make sense, I hope? All right. So there's my piece that I cut out. I made sure that I marked everything. Okay, so then let's move on. The next color is white. So I wanna find that piece. And this is where we want this piece, when it gets put on here, we want it to overlap. Well, if I cut it right at the edge, it wouldn't be overlapping that, would it? So I'm gonna lay that on top and so on. Now, I'm not gonna go any farther. I'm gonna start flipping these. Let's flip them over. And to do that, I need my other pressing sheet. And this time, I'm gonna put the one under here that is reversed. All right, do you see how if I took this, I remember doing that the first time going, what did I do? It doesn't make sense unless it's um, symmetrical, then you don't have a problem. I remember when I was writing the book, the martini glasses, the printer and I would go over the pattern and he kept saying, do I need to reverse the, the martini glasses? And I'm like, no, they're symmetrical. So. All right, so you also have numbers on here. Those will be your secret clue too. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're going to lay this on here. And what I like to do is put a, I do this right at my ironing board. We're about to lose a piece right there, Ange. Right at the bottom there, okay. And... This video should be really good because we just taped the whole thing and we hadn't pushed the right button, so we get to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I like a pressing mat. You could do that iron on your ironing board. You know, you could probably do that on your um, your gray wool if you have one of those wonderful wool mats like I have. Okay, so then, oops, came out. So, all right, we're going to put that in there. Now we're going to line this one up. What's really cool is if I line this up with, are you ready for this? If I line it up with this edge, see how easy that's gonna be? Now I've left the, prep, the paper on, but of course I would have taken it off by now. And I don't like to do that when I'm uh, teaching because as careful as I am when I'm doing a video, like in the last video, I was calling parchment paper, freezer paper, parchment paper, and so on. So, all right, now I'm gonna, oh, same thing here. It's gonna go under. There you go. And we're gonna push that. 
So you can see if I had the paper, and a lot of times, even if you've got the paper off, I just might, you know, put a couple places in there just to hold it, then double check it. I'm a big double checker. Now, another big hint, tip, are you watching? Okay, so we've got this, and we've lost our pink. We're on the lookout for a little piece of pink. Where's our pink? Here it is. Okay, when I cut this piece out, remember it's reversed there, it's finished here. So it's going to go like that. Um, you might review it like that to yourself. So this one goes, and I'm up to number four, right? This is number four. The entire piece was done like this. Just like when we did our seashell, our entire seashell was cut like that. It does add an extra layer. You know, I've read techniques in places where they can cut it. If you're if you're going more than two layers or you don't have a nice thin fusible web, you might want to cut. I like this. It comes out very nice. Okay, so you can kind of see through here. Here, Ange, can you kind of show here on that one? Have to have it reversed. So I'm gonna lay this piece here and put a pin in it and then Lay my piece there. Oh, let me show you. On this one, I did make sure too that I had marked that one's gonna go underneath. Okay, Angie, are we taping this time? I don't know if I'll let her live that Maybe. down. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I have to tease her about that when we go to dinner tonight. That's our reward. We'll go out somewhere nice for dinner. Okay. So, ta-da! You know what I really love about applique? It tells a story. I love pieced quilts, I love piecing, but applique tells a story. And when I designed this quilt, I was, I think I had gone on one of my first cruises ever to a tropical paradise, and I saw palm trees and sailboats and a lot of things that I never really got to go on in my life, and it just really uh, inspired me to have fun and design this quilt. All right, and then our last piece, it kind of looks like a molar, doesn't it, of a very large person. Okay, and then right like this, what's nice is we can line this one up along there. Ta-da! Is that fun? And I think that's one thing I really love about applique. It just, you know, nobody's gonna see the book or the pattern, and as long as you've got all those edges, if you cut it a little off, don't worry about it. Make sure it looks nice there. Let's look at this now. Uh, uh, Angie did this one for us, and she kind of tilted it, and I, I think that makes it a little more whimsical. I kind of like that. I think the one in my book that I did the first time, I did a little bit more straight across. My goal with this quilt was to have more dynamic and bright fabric, and I think we've accomplished that. Uh, we did buttonhole applique inside or you could do a feather stitch. We, I will be doing a video as we come to the last blocks where I go over um, different ways that you can finish these blocks. For now, don't trim too much off. Just get it marked in there, but didn't that one turn out pretty? So thanks for watching, but I wanna add a few things. Next month, we are going to do a, a paper piecing and it it will take a little time. It's one of my absolute, uh, as I tell people, the ladies would always come in and say how much they love these blocks, but boy, did they take a long time. I think I've come up with some things that maybe they might go a little bit more smoothly, but I love these, and, and we're gonna do pink sand beach on those. The other one we'll be doing is our dolphin, and that is a Hawaiian applique. I'm going to be sending you in the next week or two a Hawaiian applique video. It is not one that I did, but Hawaiian applique is a very advanced technique. And I didn't want to frustrate everybody out there or who has not done it. If you have done it, I'll, I'll review the directions when I hand them out. But one of the things you can do with the Hawaiian applique is we found a way to fuse it. And the way you do it, you're going to pre-fuse the, the fabric and you're not going to try and cut it through all eight layers. So please take a minute to watch the video. I think it's actually a 15 minute video. And then I'll be doing a follow-up video when I have got my samples ready, but I think it's a way you're going to like it. 
and have fun with it. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, don't hesitate to email me if you have a question. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.